Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie sparked a resurgence for the character and the franchise in general. It was a huge success, spawning a sequel, as well as two questionable follow-ups afterward, not to mention other countless merchandising. Of course, a video game was inevitable, especially given the target demographic. As expected, it's a side-scrolling platformer. You play as Batman in a hunt to take down the Joker. The game follows the plot of the movie to an extent, which in and of itself followed the darker tone of the original comics, so we won't be seeing any zany antics from the campy 1960s TV series, like the legendary shark battle on the helicopter ladder. Aside from the plot and the likeness of characters being based off the movie version, the dark tone also comes to fruition in the game, with many of the visuals not exactly being on the vibrant or colorful side of things. But as dreary as the color palette is, it's not bland, thanks to the fine details. The stages take place in areas of the movie as well, like Gotham City, the chemical plant, and the final showdown in the cathedral, although they throw in some random ones like a laboratory. There are also short cutscenes in between stages too, although they don't provide a whole lot of context most of the time, it's still cool to see, especially if you're a fan of the movie. Unfortunately though, because of how tied in this game is to the film, we don't see any other characters from the Batman universe besides Batman and Joker. All the other enemies are original to the game, including robots, monsters, and this guy with a cattle prod for an arm. The closest we get to someone from the movie is one of the generic henchmen, I guess. The bosses could have been other villains from the series, but that would have downplayed Joker's importance, so I can see why they went in this direction. But that being said, I'd rather have just had an all-encompassing Batman experience rather than to follow the events of the movie so closely. But that's not the game's biggest flaw. The controls aren't the most fluid, with the jumping being the biggest problem, as there's a slight delay. Your trajectory is fixed, so you can't really maneuver yourself while in midair, and you're relatively slow, so the controls are pretty stiff overall. It feels like you're actually wearing the damn bad suit. And while you do get weapons, sometimes you gotta use those fists. So it's discouraging that because your punches come in so quickly, you have to time them very specifically to hit your target, or you'll end up taking damage yourself. The hit detection does you no favors. This is a microcosm of how the game can sometimes be very cheap with its difficulty. The later levels being particularly tough with overpowering enemies, and super tight spaces with hazards abound. But like I mentioned earlier, you do get weapons to help you out. There's a batarang, a series of boomerangs, the gun, and the dirk, which fires off a spread shot of three projectiles. These weapons aren't infinite, you have to find ammo from the fallen enemies, but the game is pretty generous with helping you get stocked up, so you don't need to get too conservative. Another thing that helps is the ability to continue on the stage you're on after a game over and you get to maintain the weapons you had when starting your last exchange. The soundtrack is also pretty good, although there's no music from the movie, and it doesn't have that dramatic Batman feel. It's more of a standard up-tempo set that plays better to the style of a game anyway. So while there are some flaws, like the semi-clunky controls and the difficulty being too steep at times, it's still a fairly enjoyable experience. So the game starts out with a cutscene of Batman parking the Batmobile and pops out, ready to kick some ass. The first stage is Gotham City. You start out with these henchmen that simply run towards you, punch them out, and hopefully you'll get some weapons. You'll also meet up with this tiny Roomba looking robot thing that you can crouch and knock out. Even when you get weapons, it's generally preferable to just punch these fuckers out. Then you got these guys in green that intermittently fire off a flamethrower. They just sit in one place, so wait for the opening, swoop in, and wipe them out. There's also these guys that shoot at you. Like the flamethrower guys, they stay in one spot and fire one at a time. So crouch under the bullets, get close, and wipe them out. In the second area, you'll meet these machines that stay in one spot, and then when you get close, they shift towards you and detonate. 
bait them towards you and jump in the air so the explosion doesn't hurt you. Then you'll climb these platforms with flamethrower guys. Get onto one side and toss the boomerangs at him if you can. Otherwise you'll have to do a jump and punch move a few times and rinse wash repeat up the stairs. Then there are these pricks and jetpacks. They'll hover for a bit, then slip down and fire a few shots. Once they drop, that's when you'll want to attack, preferably with long distance attacks, or you might end up having to take a few hits at close range. Drop down when you get here, and this guy will act like he's just standing there having a smoke, but then he'll come at you quickly swinging a sword around. If you have a gun or dirk, you can take him out before he even tries to attack you. Otherwise, spam attack when he lunges out at you. Right after that is the boss, Killer Moth. He flies a jetpack, hovering up in the air and shooting fireballs off in four spurts, usually four or five times before either swooping down or changing his position in the air. Stay in a corner and position yourself between the fireballs. They'll always have the same trajectory. And unleash an attack on him when he's on his way down. Just don't put yourself in the middle too much. After finishing him off, you'll get a cutscene of the Batmobile blasting through the overhead door of the chemical factory, which is the next stage. You'll meet these green wolverine looking motherfuckers that move slowly and attack with their short range claw. Punching them out is safe, but when you get to these parts when they're on a small platform, you'll want to hit them with a weapon. Speaking of which, when traversing these platforms, be sure to pay attention to your jump length. If you fall into the chemicals, it'll drain your health and you have to quickly climb out of it while also avoiding the chemicals that drip from above. And be sure to avoid this drippage shit when you move through here. Wait for it to stop before moving on. When you get here, you're going to need to take a huge ass leap as close to the edge of the platform as possible to make it to the other end. And then take out this flamethrower prick through the wall if you have the weaponry. Shortly after that, is the door to the next area, where there'll be these machines with these claw extensions. They stay in one spot, so take them out from long distance. Keep your jump short when underneath these electrical currents, hitting them will deal damage to you. Scale up these platforms and try to aim so you clutch onto the sides, so you don't end up having to position yourself carefully to avoid the currents. When you get here, you're going to want to drop and clutch this wall low, so when you launch yourself, you don't end up hitting the currents. Similar situation here. Drop down low and jump. Then quickly take out the gunner guy, and right after that is the next area. Drop down, and watch out for the little shit claws that this thing up here drops onto the floor and scurries. Crouch and punch these things out if they get close. You'll drop down onto a conveyor belt, run to the right, Take out the gunner and drop down here carefully between the rolling spikes. Now here you have a small fork that ends up leading to the same place. Either you go up top and you have this Roomba and the ceiling claw things, or you drop down and you deal with this gunner guy and the spitting spikes. Jump down here between all the spikes and then watch the height of your jumps here so you don't hit the spikes, similar to the electrical current from earlier. And the exit to the boss is shortly after. This monstrosity is called Machine Intelligence. It's really just a series of guns mounted on the walls. Thankfully you can deal with them one at a time. The first is this pair of guns that alternate between each other in a series of two shots each. Crouch down to duck underneath their bullets and pop back up to take them out where there's an opening. Keep in mind you're on a conveyor belt. Next up is the electric current controller, which doesn't do much on its own but the laser things from above will fire down, so watch out for those as you fire. Then after those two stations are destroyed, the cannon on the far end will open up and fire a spread shot of three. The only time you can attack is in between its attacks when this thing pops out. Wait for it to shoot, climb up, and get close. Crouch down. If you're in the right spot, you won't take any hits, and then pop back up and punch the shit out of it a few times and crouch back down. Keep this up until it's destroyed, and you're done with the stage. You get a quick cutscene of the Joker with his Have You Ever Danced With The Devil In The Moonlight line, and fires a shot. Next stage is the underground conduit, and right out of the chute, you have to deal with this agile ogre fuck. All he does is jump on you, 
but he's fast and tough to dodge. Spam attack the shit out of him, and if you crouch down, you might get lucky and he'll jump over you. Another thing you can do is stop as soon as you see him, and he'll just stand there and jump straight into the air, allowing you to take him out from a distance if you have the weapons. Watch out for all the spinning spikes under the water when jumping across the small platforms. And when you get here, wait for an opening and swoop in. Punch out the Roomba guy and hit up the exit to the next area. When you drop down here, veer left or right so you can land on one of these safe spots, and then head left. At this drop, stay right so you don't land in the spikes, and then you've got two more of these ogre bastards. Don't advance too far after encountering the first one, or you'll have to deal with both of them at once. Fuck that. Go up these platforms and scale your way up the walls to get to the exit to the next area. Some of these areas are a little trickier than others, but thankfully there are no enemies here. Soon after, you'll meet these machines that fire flames from a distance and ride back and forth. Watch the trajectory of where the flames land and position yourself so you're out of its range moving in only when there's an opening to attack. Like right here, you can just get underneath and unleash the batarangs. You might want to use weapons against these guys too, only because they're on such small platforms you might not be able to land on, and you don't want to fall between them because you'll end up backtracking as a result, since the first half of this area is making your way upwards. Then you'll have this long stretch of scaling up these walls. Getting in your way are these flamethrower guys and spinning spikes. You'll sometimes have to reposition yourself, letting yourself land lower on one side so you can reach the area right below the spikes on the other side, for example. You're not going to be just simply going back and forth upwards every single time. After getting to the top, you'll soon reach the boss, the Electrocutioner. He'll hop from one side to the other, taking a big swing with his cattle prod arm and sending a huge wave of electricity. If you're low on health, you'll have to work your way off the walls to get up here between his attacks before dropping in to get a shot in, and then rinse, wash, repeat. If you do have at least a decent health meter, follow him from side to side and spam attack with batarangs until you take him out. You get a cutscene of Joker asking you to look at his latest work of art. And that's it, right onto the next stage, the laboratory ruins. I guess this is where Joker developed all these monsters and shit. Oh, and of course you have to deal with these fuckers again. Try to do the screen freeze trick to get them out of your way, although you'll want to take out these other cretins on the screen first. Most of the first area is pretty straightforward and linear with familiar enemies. Once you get to the second area, you'll have to do some more wall jumping. Weave your way back and forth so you'll land on the left side, but also time it so you don't get hit by the flames. Because of the low ceiling, you're gonna have to drop down and use the walls of the floating platforms to advance. Then you've got tighter spaces with even more spikes. Do a short jump here when there's an opening so you can take them out. Then you've got this spot with the spinning spikes at low level with the claw thingies getting dropped in the middle of it. Feels like you can't get across this unscathed at first glance, but if you leap way up here, you'll have enough reach with a long jump. Just make sure to time it so you don't get clunked by a claw thingy. In the next area, wait for an opening between the electric currents, but you'll have to punch out these stupid things while you're waiting. And then you've got the damn claw thingies, along with one of these machines at the same time. Get through as quickly as you can. Take out this Roomba since it's on such a small platform, then scale up the wall, but again watch out for the damn electric currents. Hang back if you need to wait. Then you'll need to drop down, but make sure you drop straight down so you land on this tiny platform. But you gotta keep jumping cause this is a mini conveyor belt. So get off this thing as quickly as you can and move on. And then when you're here, again, drop straight down to land on the platform. If you fall between the mini conveyor belts, you have to climb your way back up. And you might even drop into the flame way below at the beginning of the whole damn area. Climb up the stairs, crouch down, and wait for the openings to wipe out these machines. When you get here, use this wall as a boost to reach these pricks to get them out of your way. Right before the boss are a few of these wolverine fucks and claw thingies. With the infinite claws, 
This is a good spot to farm up on weapons and or health if you need it before the battle. The boss is known as Dual Container Alarm. A pair of vehicles that run along the cables in the background and once in a while fire a projectile to either side. Besides the projectiles, you're also often in danger of taking a hit from the machines themselves since you're in such a tight ass space. You can use the walls to climb up and make your way around in a circle of sorts while firing at them through the walls on your way down, but this is more time consuming and more dangerous than the method of just getting in this spot, crouching down, and punching the machines as they pass by. Even if they make contact with you, you won't be hurt as long as your punch connects. Just watch for the projectiles as the other one passes by. Take the time to jump here and there to avoid that shit. Once you take one out, the other will pick up speed and start firing off three flames that spurt off into pairs to either side. Thankfully it stays on one plane this time, down at the bottom. Also you're still safe from the fire as long as you're in this spot. But you do still have to kill this thing, so in between its attacks, drop down, fire, and hop back up quickly before taking a flame or contact from the machine itself. Rinse, wash, repeat, and you'll finish it off and get a cutscene of Batman flying to the cathedral, which is where the final stage takes place. The spinning gears are the bane of your existence in this stage. Carefully jump between them, and watch out for them horizontally too when you're scaling the walls. When you get here, drop down and cling low so you don't hit the gears when you take the long jump across. Just be ready for the claw thingies that await you on the other side. The last two thirds of the stage are this climb up these small platforms with all these fucking gears making this an even tighter squeeze than it needs to be. You have to drop and quickly clutch the wall before hitting the gear, and then launch yourself to the other side. But you have to get really low without hitting the gear below so that you don't hit the one above you on your way across. It's like goddamn surgery, and there are a couple spots like this, which is a real pain in the ass. Like earlier, watch out for the gears along the wall and position yourself accordingly. When you get to the top of this shit, drop from this side over and back so you land here, away from the claw thingies, and then the boss is just ahead. So the stage may be shorter than the others, minus the first level, but it's plenty difficult. And then it gets worse with these boss fights. And yeah, I did say boss fights plural, which you can easily guess right away when you discover that you're not fighting the Joker. Instead you've got Firebug. He'll get up close and jump back twice, each time tossing a massive fireball at you. Jump over them and unleash Batarangs. Now what sucks is that there's very little room for error here. You can just about clear these fireballs, so you have to time it right, which isn't helped at all by the delayed jumping controls. Also if you refrain from attacking for long enough, he'll charge at you and start unleashing a fury of punches. Attack quickly to get him back to his fireball pattern. After enough shots, and hopefully without taking too much damage, you'll finish him off and it's the final showdown with Joker. For some reason, the Joker can summon lightning, or electricity in general. Just something you picked up along the way, I guess. He'll raise his hand and three bolts will come raining down. With one directly in front of him, and a little bit of space between the next two. He'll then fire his gun, and wander across the room a couple times. The gun does a great deal of damage, and you can't crouch to avoid it. You'll have to jump over his projectile. Now the best way to avoid the gun is to actually stand right up close to Joker, as his barrel is ludicrously long. But then you'll need to back away a bit to avoid the lightning or his charge when he decides to go for a run. If you fire off Batarangs at a madman's pace, while managing to avoid the bullets, you should be able to finish him off, even if you take some hits from him running at you and the lightning, as long as you don't get hit by that damn gun. After taking him out, you'll get a cutscene where Batman tells Joker that he knows he killed his parents, and just straight up fucking murders him, shoving him off the ledge to his death. It's a little bit of creative license, as the events of the movie were a little different, but the same idea. It is quite dark for an NES game though to have a scene like this, including close-ups of the corpse. So that's it, the Joker's dead, and the next game in the series would be Batman Returns... Wait, what? Batman Return of the Joker? So he survived? 
Well, that'll be for another day. And that'll wrap up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs>